now come to the final part of our course, which is going to deal with financial applications. In this part of the course, we're going to discuss uh, such topics as interest, and we're going to talk about the different types of interest that exist, uh, and we'll also talk about something called annuities. Both interest and annuities occur very often in our lives, especially as you get older and older and you uh, invest money or you purchase things uh, that are really expensive. So we're going to go over what the different types of interest are, what annuities are, and how they can relate to uh, what will happen in your life. So before we get to there though, we need to discuss first of all what is interest. You've heard the word before and you've probably think of interest as all that extra money you earn by putting your money into a savings account and uh, it just sits there and then the bank just gives you money and that's interest. Well, you know, what is interest? Interest by definition is essentially a fee that is paid to someone for letting them borrow your money. So when you put your money into a bank account, you're essentially giving your money to the bank so that the bank can use it for other things. It could spend it on uh, other uh, financial things or it could lend it out to other people or whatever but essentially the bank is using your money for their own good so they're going to be paying you interest as their fee for being able to use your money just like if you borrow money from the bank whether you're buying a, a car or a mortgage uh, they'll charge you interest for the use or the ability to use their money so I have that written down right here We normally denote interest by capital letter I, or the amount of interest earned as the capital letter I, and we calculate it as a percentage of what we call the principal. So uh, that's just another word, of, way of saying the starting value. The percentage of interest we call the annual rate of interest, and right now we're going to define that as the small letter R. So in the world of interest, there are two different types. We'll be discussing both types. Uh, maybe you could just pause for a second and see, do you know or can think of what two types of interest are? Well, one type of interest that we're going to discuss first is called simple interest. You could say that it's the easier of the two. <laughs> the second type of interest that we're going to discuss in a future lesson is called compound interest. All right, let's get to what simple interest is. Simple interest is actually very easy to calculate. Perhaps that's where they came up with the name. It's calculated by multiplying the principal by the annual rate of interest. And then depending on how much that uh, amount of money is in the investment, we're going to then multiply that by time. Uh, things to note here, time we always reference in years, so if the time was five years, the value of t would equal five, but if the time was, let's say, one and a half years, instead of t being, let's say, 18 for 18 months, we would say that it's 1.5 for 1.5 years. Remember that it's always in years. Interest rate is all, always given as a decimal, so if we are told that the interest rate is 8%, our decimal would be 0 0.08. So simple interest is calculated by multiplying the principal by the annual rate of interest as a decimal and then by time, giving us this formula. Interest equals P times R times T, or the principal, the initial amount, times the interest rate, times the amount of time. Pretty simple. I equals PRT. That's just the interest that's earned on that investment. So what if what do we what if we want to know what amount we need to pay back at the end? So if I borrowed a thousand dollars from you at simple interest, and you know eight years later I want to pay you back, how much do I pay you back? Well, that's easy. We just take the initial amount, the P, the principal, and we add on the amount of interest that was accumulated. So the end amount or the A value equals the initial amount, the P plus the amount of interest I, or A equals P plus I. Two very straightforward and easy formulas to remember. Let's put those formulas into action. Here's example one. How much interest is earned if $1,200 is invested 
at, in our first example here, 5% per year simple interest for three years. Okay, well, how much interest? So we want to know what the amount of interest is. Remember, our formula for interest is I equal PRT. So what do we need to know? We need to know what was the principal amount, or the initial amount. It's 1200 What's the rate of interest? That's the R. Well, the rate of interest is 5% per year. So we write it as a decimal. Remember, 5% is 0 0.05, not 0 0.5. That's 50%. And we multiply it by the amount of time. Well, we're putting it in the investment for three years, so T equals 3. And then you just get out your calculator. 1,200 times 0 0.05 times 3 equals 180. So the amount of interest earned was $180. Yeah, easy enough. All right, let's look at part B. If we still invest $1,200 as our principal, what happens when simple interest is 8% per annum for seven months. So a couple of different things here. First of all, we don't have per year, we have per annum. Well, per annum means the same thing as per year. We have different ways of saying uh, year in the financial world. There's, uh, I guess, different lingo that they use, and a lot of it's derived from Latin. So per year, per annum, annually, they all mean the same thing, which is just per year. You may also see per annum written as P dot a. That's just uh, a shorthand of writing per year or per annum. Okay, so 8% per annum or per year, simple interest for seven months. And remember, t is always derived in years. So if I have seven months, I don't want to write that as, you know, how much is seven months in a whole year? Well, the only way we really know how to write that is if we write it as a fraction. So seven months of year, a year has 12 total months, so seven months would be seven twelfths. So that's going to be our t value. So let's plug these numbers into our formula here. i equals prt, so i equals the principal, which was 1,200, times our rate of interest was 8%, so 0 0.08, times the amount of time, seven twelfths of a year, or seven months. Let's plug that into the calculator. So 1200 times 0 0.08 times seven twelfths, I can do seven divided by 12. Bed mass, I'm doing multiplying and dividing all in one step, so that's okay. So I get 56. So this is only going to be $56 worth of interest. Remember, this was only in the account for seven months, not three years like the other one, even though the interest rate's higher. All right, last example. 4.25% annual simple interest for only 90 days. All right, well, the P part's easy. That's still 1,200. The interest rate is 4.25%. Don't write it as 4.25. Don't be mixed up. Remember, as a decimal, you move the decimal place two spaces, so it's 0 0.0425. And then the amount of time is 90 days. We don't put 90 where t goes. Remember, we have to write it as a fraction or uh, a part of a year. So if it was seven months, we'd write seven over 12. 90 days, we could assume that it's three months, but in when we talk about days, we're not exactly sure that that's three months, because there could be two months that have 31 days and then one month that has 30. So that may not be exactly true. Because we know it's exactly 90 days, however, we can write this as a fraction of a year in days. So remember, a year has uh, 365 days, unless it's a, a leap year. But in the financial world, we assume that all years have 365 days. So this is going to be our fraction of time, 90 over 365. So I'm going to put that in our formula. If you put uh, 3 months, so 3 over 12, you'll get a very, very, very close answer to this, but it will be slightly off, and I guess not correct, because we want 90 days. So again, we'll bring our calculator out. 
1200 times 0 0.0425 times 90 over 365. We get 12.5753. Uh, because we're dealing with money, though, we're going to round this to two decimal places. So 12, decimal 5, and then that 7 gets rounded up to an 8. So 12.58. Part 2 asks, what amount must be paid back at the end of the lending period? So we've calculated all of the different amounts of interest, but now how much has to be paid back? Well, if remember, the amount paid back is always equal to whatever your principal was, or the initial amount, plus the amount of interest that was earned. So for part A, it was $1,200 was our uh, principal. We're going to add on the amount of interest of 1800 So 1200 plus, sorry, 180 not 1800 This one is equal to 13 80. Remember, if you're putting a dollar sign, it always goes on the left side. For part B, it'll be 1200 and then add $56. So 1256. And for part C, it'll be 1200 plus $12.58. So 1200 and $12 and 58 cents. Here's one final example to look at. Gertrude deposits $500 into a guaranteed investment certificate, or otherwise known as a GIC. You may have put money, or maybe your parents or your grandparents have put money for you into something that's called a GIC. Essentially it's a, uh, an account that you can put money in that earns interest over time, um, that's different than a savings account. So you can't take that money out until that time has expired. Uh, so uh, you'll see this come up a lot. So $500 got put into a GIC and it earns 6% per year simple interest. Part A asks us to develop a linear model to relate the amount that's in the account to time. So here's what we can do. If we're relating it to a linear model. Remember, linear models we can always write as y equals mx plus b. That's the equation of a line. So our two variables are y and x. But because we're going to be relating the amount in our account to time, we're going to replace y and x with amount and time. And the two variables that make sense for this would be to replace the y with the amount and the x with time. So now we just have to figure out what goes in here, or what's going to uh, determine our slope, and then we need to determine our b value, which remember is our y-intercept, or the initial amount. So just look at the question again. What do you think our initial amount is? That's right, it's $500. So really our b value here is 500. Now, what's going to determine how much our account goes up by each time? Well, that's our slope. And if we relate this uh, formula right here to our actual amount formula, A equals P plus I, this 500 is our P value. It's our principal. So the other portion here, the MX, or the whatever is missing here for the M, has to be accounted for in the I. And remember, I equals P times R times T. So this T is already here. This P times R must be the other portion of uh, that slope right there. So P times R times T plus 500. Well, we know the principles 500. We know the rate of interest is 6%. We don't know how much time is in there because we're going to, you know, create a linear model that is relating to time. So we're going to just keep t as a variable, and we're going to add 500 as our initial amount. And our a is here. So we can multiply this 500 times 0 0.06 to clean this up. We end up with a equals 
500 times 0 0.06. Well, I'll just do 5 times 6, which is 30. So that would give us 3,000, but move the decimal place 2 over, so we end up with 30. So 30t plus 500. And now what this does is if I put in any amount of time, so one year, two years, ten years, a hundred years, whatever, I can figure out how much is in this account. Alright, part B. How long will it take to the nearest month for the investment that we put in there to double? Well, the initial investment we put in was $500. We want it to have doubled, which means our end amount uh, at the end of this will be double 500 or 1000. So we're going to put 1000 where A goes. This is what we want to end up with. And uh, we're looking for the amount of time. So we don't know T. We're going to solve for T. So let's do that. We'll just rearrange our linear formula here and solve for T. So the first thing because I'm solving or isolating for t over here, we always do backwards bed, bed mass when isolating. So let's get rid of the 500 here first and subtract it over to the other side. So 1,000 minus this 500 leaves us with 500. And now to get t by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by 30. And so we end up with t is equal and when I do 500 divided by 30, I'll just pull my calculator out quickly here. So 500 divided by 30, we end up with 16.66666 repeated. Okay, so 16.6 repeated. A little dot over there, because I rounded. All right, so um, I need to figure out how many uh, how long this is to the nearest month. Well, 16.6667 uh, repeated, 6 repeated, well that's 16 years plus a chunk. So I know it's going to be 16 years plus some uh, chunk of a year. And if you know your fractions very well, 666 repeated is 2 thirds. So 2 thirds of a year is, well how many months is 2 thirds of a year? Well if a year is 12 months, 2 thirds of that is 8. So 16.667 would be the same thing as saying 16 years and 8 months. So you put $500 into a GIC that earns 6% simple interest, it'll take you 16 years, almost 17 years, for that to double in the amount of time. I guess that's a long time, but it's free money when you think about it, right? Okay, last one. What annual rate of interest must be earned so that the investment will double in eight years? So we just saw that it took 16 years for it to double when the interest rate was at 6%. What do we think the interest rate would need to be if I wanted it to double in eight years? So let's check this out. Again, I want my investment to double, so my end amount here will be 1,000. I have 30, and uh, I want it to be 8 years, oh, uh, sorry, we don't know that this is 30, because we are changing our rate of interest. Remember, our rate of interest before was embedded in this 30. So I don't know this anymore. I know the P, but I don't know the R. So now what we're going to do is we're going to write uh, just this out. The P was 500. I don't know the R. That's what we're looking to find. But I do know the time I want it to take is 8 years. So the t value will be 8. My initial value is still 500. All right, so let's uh, figure this out. Well, 500 times 8 is 4,000. So this will be 1,000 equals 4,000r uh, plus 500 we're going to rearrange to solve for r. So we'll move the 500 over, that becomes 500. On this side, 1000 minus 500 is 500. And now I'm going to divide both sides by 4000 to get r by itself. So bam, and bam. 
So what we get here is r equals 500 divided by 4,000. Well, uh, I can do this in my head here. I know that 4,000 divided by 500 is 8, because 40 divided by 5 is 8. So if I flip that around or take the reciprocal, this has to equal 1 eighth. But I'm trying to find a rate of interest. So let's write this as a decimal. 1 eighth. You can do this on your calculator, but I know it's 0 0.125. So if you were to write a therefore statement, you would say, therefore, the rate of simple interest And how do we read uh, 0 0.125 as a percentage? Remember, just move the decimal place two spaces. So the rate of sim simple interest is not 0 0.125 percent, but 12.5 percent, which in an investment is pretty unrealistic. You won't really see something that makes 12.5 percent interest. But for this example, that's what it happened to be. All right, so hopefully that's a good introduction to simple interest, and uh, good luck on your homework for this lesson. Don't want no loving, don't want no kissing, don't want no gal to call me honey. Don't want my name in the Hall of Fame, just want a big fat pile of money. Give me that almighty dollar for that lettuce, hear me holler. Give me buckets full of ducats, let me walk around and waller in Mazuma. El dinero, wanna be a millionaire, give me money, 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 money. I want that green ammunition, that's the stuff for which I'm wishing. Fill my closets with deposits, I'm a demon in addition. Give me shekels, give me pesos, let me see their smiling faces. Money, 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 money.